CataractCoach.com. More from her ASC arrest course. Now another one. Iowa choice and teenagers. 16 years old, plus one, plus one at 90. Both eyes look like that. Wow. Dense PSC cataract. 16 years old, in high school. He plays baseball, he's a wrestler. And what are you going to choose for an Iowa in this case? There are a lot of options here, right? I mean, think about it. Young guy. He's a big kid, though. He's six foot, 200 pounds. He's, uh, he's getting to be an adult almost. But obviously, the catch is he spends his entire day, like all 16 year olds do, playing sports, but also on his phone. All day on his phone. And that PSC is pretty bad. He's like 2,200. And so, just thinking about this, what are you going to do? And he's a, he's a high school wrestler, and he also plays high school baseball. And he's hoping to get some sort of athletic scholarship to university. So if he's an athlete, and being an athlete myself, and for stuff like that where you need to have hand-eye coordination with baseball, I would not do Monovision because he's going to lose that. So that's something I would not do. But I would consider doing um, an EDF IOL because the visual side effects are pretty low. The newer ones are very Is common. that enough reading, though, for a 16-year-old who has a phone all day? You know, that's a really hard I don't know. It, it, Give him some reading glasses. He's tall. He has long tall. arms. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be fine. You know, it's, it's the, the phones are here. Like, they don't, and video games are intermediate vision, right? Like, I don't know. I have so here, monofocal, aim plano, monofocal, monovision, trifocal, oh. EDOF, plus or minus mini mono, something else. D would be my choice if I had to choose one. Of DP, what do you think? Yeah, I, I agree with D. All right. Uh, <laughs> You're you not didn't. gonna like me again. Did you do it, a trifocal? I did. Don't don't roll your eyes at me. <laughs> Come on. So so no one will do monofocal plane OU, right? Correct. And no. you what about That's, monofocal wait, monovision and equal wait, contact when he plays baseball? So a monofocal plane OU in a young patient, disaster. Yeah. They, because they have never experienced presbyopia, you will be making a very unhappy patient. How about B then? Monovision, and then he can wear a contact when he plays he, baseball. He could. That, that, I didn't think of that, but... No, because still, that one eye has zero accommodation. Yeah. They are so miserable. If you're going to do anything, one option could have been bilateral minus 150s. But I the found how's he going to see the baseball? No, no, no. I'm just saying, if you're going to do something that... Well, then he would wear a contact for the baseball. But then he wouldn't see a close when he's wearing the contact. Okay, then. Just do something else. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did you beat a comedy lens, right? Yes, that's it. Exactly. Yeah, so I, I thought in this one, just given his needs, and, you know, remember, too, how sensitive that retina is when you're 16, right? Compared to, like, an old person. A 50-year-old versus a 16-year-old. But China, I want to ask you, why did he have PSCCs? Is I don't know. He had a full workup? Who knows? No, the steroids. An entire workup? So I don't really know. Bilateral. Both eyes, 2200. And so obviously the lens is butter. You don't even need a Faco Pro. Just slurp it right out of there. That's simple. <laughs> but in, a, yeah, in, in this case, uh, I chose the trifocal lenses because I also think his ret he's, first, he's 16, he'll adapt to things quickly. So you can see I put the Faco probe away, but it's going to go right to the IA probe. And then the other reason is at, at this age, you know, your retinal sensitivity is just so good. If you shine a flashlight in your eye for 10 seconds and turn off, how fast before you recover retinal function? I do it to a 16 year old, it's much better. Getting old is. is but he's sucks. gonna get old. <laughs> I know, but he's 16 now. He's got it. When you were 16, could you think of the age of 50? But, but they will be retired when he's old. So. <laughs> <I'm dead. laughs> he's 50, I'm yeah, out. So, so I'm gonna do the trifocal lens here. And I think it's, it's even a toric trifocal. And he ended up bang on Plano and was absolutely thrilled. He was just a little wonky initially. But, you know, six months later, he was like, no, nah, totally fine. So I ended up doing that. So are you going to do a post erectus, by the way? Do it now, the time of cataract surgery. No pause caps well, no do future YAG, no because future IOL well exchange because he's going to be unhappy with private lens. I would just polish the capsule well for now. Yeah. Agree. I mean, you could, you could make an argument, though, that right, you, can, you get a nice, beautiful posterior rexus. His anterior hyaline face is intact. He has a nice, thick, solid vitreous, not liquidy at all. You probably wouldn't have any, pro, any vitreous probes at all when you did a posterior rexus. As long as you're really good at doing that, yeah. right? If that's in your wheelhouse and you feel comfortable with it, do it. But, but then, on the other hand, too, he's 16. He's a big boy. He can sit for a yak laser, right? There you that's go. It. And also, if you screw it up, you really screwed it up for a, this kid's whole life. 
Oh, and then you can't get the Torah trifocal in. There you go. It's all right, so let's, let's, okay, let's not do it then. <laughs> so, <laughs> luck, luckily, in this case, I did listen to you. Do you, th- do you think he'd, there's a chance he'd want an Iowa exchange too? Maybe. You never know what he's going to need yeah. or want or what's going to happen down the road. So if you don't have to touch the posterior capsule, yeah. like you do it in, kid, in babies or, or one or two-year-olds, and then you do it. I've done it in cases where they have such bad kyphosis of their necks that I know I'm not going to be able to sit them at the uh, capsule automy machine. But other than that, they're time-consuming. Sure. You have to be meticulous. You have to be very careful, and you have to keep, once you've done it, constant pressure, because the last thing you want is the anterior capsule, the anterior hyaline face, excuse me, to come forward towards you. So it, it's not an easy procedure to do, posterior rhesus. It's harder than an anterior rhesus. For sure. What, what percent of your trifocal lens patients end up getting an eye wall exchange in the future? Well, if you What'd pick you your patients properly, okay, I, none of mine have had that. Zero. Zero but I pick them properly. I don't offer it to everybody. Because Deep. happiness equals rea- post-op reality minus expectations. Yeah. So sure. if you manage expectations well, then they're going to be happy. So you've never spent a trifocal? No, I have not. But it's like Dick Lindstrom said. But it's Beverly Hills like, patients are different. They complain a lot. You get a lot more money than I do, so suck it up. <laughs> um, I'm from Canada. Come on. Uh-oh. Canada, eh? Eight? <laughs> eight. Uh, Dick Lindstrom said it brilliantly. It's not 2020, it's 20 happy. Oh, I so like just that. Just remember that. That's a key point. All right, let's go. I'm going to put the trifocal lens in, and he is definitely 20 over happy. But yeah, that's a good point. I mean, we have in our center there are probably less than 1% trifocals explanted, but you know, we still see it. And I know my buddy Steve Saffron there in the front row explains yeah. them all the time. Steve posts the best videos. I know. So, and, and doggy pictures. So. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I'll try to polish up the capsule as much as I can. I'm just kind of aware that, yeah, he may need a YAG capsule out of me later. That's not that big of a deal. I try to do a reasonably generous rexus here. It's still going to overlap 360, and obviously it'll contract down a little bit. And then it's a toric trifocal, so I'm trying to get that lined up. There's some marks on the cornea. There you go. And so the patient ended up having a beautiful outcome and back to wrestling and totally normal function. So ends up being pretty happy. Just uh, in these cases, I think there's no perfect IOL choice. And his family, and he struggled a lot making that decision. And his family was very good about letting him just decide, okay, what is it you want? And in the idea of under-promising, in my patient education video, of what trifocal IOL vision looks like, I really under-promise it. Okay. So I have simulations where it's like, you know, way less contrast, softer focus, nighttime glare and halos. I use images from previous studies. So I have a patient education video that really under-promises it and all likely to be much happier. So can I make one criticism? Of course, sure. Only one? <laughs> um, I would have just maybe made my rexus a little bit smaller so that I would have had more overlap. With these type of lenses, especially Torah, I like to have that so it sticks in and stays a little better. Good point. Um, because you can see it wanting to come forward because I don't know if he's pressure, like causing any posterior pressure, but I would have just, just a little, a little bit, bit smaller. A little bit smaller. Yeah, lucky this guy, we had a pretty good contraction of the capsule post-op, okay. and so it definitely overlapped full 360, but I see what you're saying. It's very, if there's any shallowing of that AC, that one edge of the optic would come up. And then if you get a tilt, then you increase your dysphotopsias and you have problems, right? For, sh- for sure. And how long did you keep him out of activities at age 16? wrestling and all I, the It wasn't a tremendous amount of time. I think he wore protective goggles for wrestling for a couple months, but okay. I think it was only like two weeks, a week for each eye, two weeks. So not a whole lot. I mean, we tried to make a smaller incision and he's, I don't anticipate him getting hit in the face. But wrestling, he wore goggles for sure. Okay. And then baseball, I, I think he's wearing a batting helmet, just pretty, pretty annoying. And he, had, he said he had normal functions. He was fine. Stitch? Could you do a safety stitch? Yeah, that's a good idea. Would you do a tenoproline or teno... Um, uh, well, um, see, the problem is bicycle. if you put the stitch in, you have to take it out, Yeah. you know, I- unless you use something like bike rope, which can be really inflammatory. So that's the thing with these kids. I mean, if it's a nice self-sealing wound, I don't think you need a stitch. Yeah, we didn't, I didn't put a stitch in either eye. He did fine, but I guess there's no harm. But, yeah, you have to take the stitch out. And he, this kid also was from, uh, from out of state, from Arizona. Yeah, so really important, everybody who puts a stitch in, remember that that is a foreign body that needs to come out. Don't just send the patient away and never see him again. We had a patient who came back with a suture abscess. Oh my goodness. In their only eye. Yeah. 